Hello, my name is Kelsey Haynes from LTV News, and today we have the opportunity of sitting down with retiring TCJ President Dr. Barbara Gittenstein. Dr. Gittenstein, thank you for having us today. It's a pleasure to be here. So can you tell us a little bit about the expectations you had coming into this position and how they differed from the reality of the experiences you had? Well, I was really fortunate. <clears throat> I came from a position at Drake University in Des Moines, Iowa. I was the executive vice president and provost. And that meant I was like the chief operating officer. So I was absolutely confident that I'd had every experience to prepare me for this role. Being a president wasn't any different than what I'd already experienced. About day three, <laughs> I found out that was not the case. Uh, because when you are the president, um, you know, the buck really does stop here. And it's just a different feeling. And uh, that, was a, um, that, was, that was sort of an eye opener. Sure. I mean, you never really know what exactly to expect. You do not. And, it, and people were very helpful and very supportive. Um, but I just didn't have the expectation of the span of the job, the scope of the job. And, uh, and you just have to learn that on, on the job. Right. Exactly. And for you coming into TCNJ, not only as the president, but as a female president, in fact, the first one yes. at TCNJ. Yes, that's true. Although I will have to say people were from the very beginning very very open. And uh, I don't feel that um, I, there were obstacles here on campus to my being president. There were obstacles to being a, a female president, but they were off the campus. They were from organizations that just couldn't, couldn't imagine uh, a CEO that was a woman. Right. But on the campus, I didn't feel any pushback. I really did not. That's good. I mean, what specifically were challenges that you may have faced, if you want to share a little bit about? Well, well part of it was, and this sort of struck me uh, about a week ago, I was at a meeting, and for the first time in a million years, well, 18 maybe, <laughs> um, I was in the room and I was the only woman. And there were only, everybody else was men. And I thought, how strange that is. And then I remembered when I, had first, when I was first president, and certainly when I was provost, often I was the only woman in the room. And uh, so you suddenly you have this kind of mantle of having to be more than just the president of the College of New Jersey. You sort of have to represent all women, which is crazy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and impossible. But, but there is that kind of strange feeling. Absolutely. I mean, you're coming into a completely different dynamic where you know, it's hard to sometimes adjust to it. But Absolutely. for you, what did the role or the job title of president really mean to you? And what exactly did your job entail? Well, I, I think the, the most important thing to think about when you're the president of a college, well, let me start with when you're the CEO of, an, in, of any organization and then speak specifically about higher education. You are, you, I don't believe that to be a successful CEO, you should imagine that you're the only one that makes all the decisions or that you're the only one that has all the answers. I think that's a very dangerous way to lead. Sure. Uh, because otherwise, if that were the case, you don't need any other staff, just one person. Uh, these other people are hired because they have expertise, and I think that's very important. I think being the CEO or the president of an institution of higher education, that is even more true because you're in uh, an organization of uh, w where you're surrounded by the most intelligent people, uh, the most informed people, the, the people with the, the greatest experience, whether you're talking about in the classroom or in student affairs or in our administrative structure. Uh, and they have the expertise and you need to learn to depend on them, but also in the end have the courage to make the decision. Absolutely. So thinking moving forward a little bit, um, you know, a lot of people are talking about changes that have happened at TCNJ, community members, alumni, how TCNJ has really changed a lot over the time it's been here. So for you, what was it like to watch, you know, over the past 19 years, TCNJ transform and what was the biggest difference that you saw? It was very exciting to watch the change and I think a lot of people see that change mostly in the landscape, in the physical landscape right. and we have made a lot of changes in the physical landscape. Uh, I think there's no question about that. But I frankly don't think those are the most important changes. <clears throat> I think the most important changes have to do with the community itself. Uh, when I came to TCNJ we were very, very well known for the quality of our students as based on SAT scores 
and we were well known for having a beautiful campus. But we weren't very well known for the quality of our faculty, despite the fact that there were some very good faculty members here. That just wasn't something we were well known for. And we were not known for the rigor of our academic curriculum. And to me, those two changes, during my tenure, I've hired more than 65% of the faculty. Wow. So there's been a huge turnover in the faculty. And the faculty that we have attracted are the kinds of faculty that should be at a place like this, who know how to engage, particularly with undergraduate students, and know how to challenge really smart, uh, engaged, um, intellectual students. We also have to have attracted, have to have created a curriculum that puts the relationship of the students and the faculty in a, on a different level. So what's called the academic transformation, which happened in the early part of my tenures, about 2003, 2005, um, really transformed that relationship. And that's when we started doing more and more faculty-student research. It's a great feeling to know what a you know, impact you've made, on, not on TCNJ, but on everyone, the community. Well, thank you for saying that, although I would argue that I didn't make that. I hired the right people, and they made that difference. Right. So continuing to look back, what would you say is one of your most memorable moments as president of TCNJ? Mm. Let me talk about the positive ones. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there were, I mean, it was so much fun to be here for the sesquicentennial, the 150th birthday. That was really wonderful to be able to reach back into our past, and there were so many fun events. I was very excited about certain kinds of moments of um, celebration being awarded a Phi Beta Kappa chapter. Only 10% of the institutions in the country have Phi wow. Beta Kappa chapters. Um, seeing uh, several of our um, athletic teams win the NCAA. So those were very high moments. There were some very memorable moments that were very sad. And almost all of them had to do with a student issue. Right. So talking more with the students, what do you think is the most valuable thing that a student could get out of a TCNJ education, and what makes that different from something they might receive in another college or university? Well, I think what TCNJ offers is, uh, is two things, and they're sort of like contradictions. Both of them are contradictions. One is that people always talk about TC, I think often talk about TCNJ as a small school. We're actually not small. Right. 7,500 students and more than 1,000 employees but we feel small. So that's something to really relish. What that means is that there are really close relationships between students and faculty and students and senior staff, particularly staff in student affairs. And I think that that's something that really helps undergraduates, particularly, prepare for, for the world after undergraduate school, whether that's going to graduate school or whether that's going out into the workforce. The other thing is uh, that TCNJ offers is that if you look at the quality of what happens in the academic core of the campus, it's as good as any private school in the country. And I don't think that's just making it up. That's not just a president bragging. We've got all of the statistics to prove that. Uh, and I, I could tick them off for you, but you've read them all and you know them all, so I won't do that. But um, that's, that means that you've got the quality of, of an intellectual environment and of an educational experience that you would have at any Ivy League institution. It's just that your parents can afford it right. or you can afford yeah. it. Absolutely. So looking to the future, what is some advice you would give to Catherine Foster who will be your successor? First of all, I want to say how pleased I am. With, with the board's choice of Dr. Foster. I think she will be a tremendous asset to the college. She's very excited about coming, and I think that that's really important. My advice to her has been pay attention to the culture of the place. That doesn't mean you shouldn't come in and, and have some ideas about what, what you think ought to happen, and you want someone who has those ideas. You don't want someone who comes in and just says, whatever you guys say is fine. I mean, otherwise, you don't have a leader. Um, but pay attention to the culture, listen to, listen to what are the values of the place and work with them. Um, she seems to be that kind of leader already and that has resonated with her and that would be my advice. Good. So continuing with um, looking back on your years as president, is there anything that you would say that you regretted or anything you would have done a little differently? 
Well, I have some regrets of things that I have not accomplished. Um, and uh, I'm hoping that they will be accomplished. Uh, but some of them are already on their way. The two that I, th the three that I think of uh, most significantly first is to make sure that the College of New Jersey is recognized as um, the gem that it is in the state of New Jersey and that the legislature enshrines that in some kind of way uh, so that the institution is protected from some of maybe the legislative whims that happen when they get frustrated sure. with other institutions that aren't doing well. The second, where I think we've made some progress, um, but I'd like to see more, has to do with, it's sort of two-pronged. One is continuing to diversify the student body and the faculty. We've made some good progress, but we need to make more progress. And as part of that, we should be embracing our past, and that is embracing our, 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 uh, where we grew up, where we were born, which was Trenton, and uh, not separate ourselves from that. And finally, the part that's, that's, that's challenging but probably easier and more fun is to raise some more money. <laughs> sure. Uh, we've done very well. We've had our first successful uh, campaign, and, it, and we're $47 million as opposed to 40, which was terrific. Sure. But a school like this should have a much larger endowment than it does. So thinking more on the diversity aspect, are there any specific things that you think we could do in order to enhance more diversity on this campus? You know, I think what it is is it's just hard work sure. and it's continuous. It's not, it's not trying, it's not any one thing um, that's going to solve this problem. It's, a pro it's not a problem, solve this challenge. Um, it's continually working and making the place feel more welcoming to people that are maybe different from us and think differently from us uh, and have different uh, backgrounds. So what is it that we do? I think we're seeing um, that, that change if you look at the numbers of, st of student applications that come from underrepresented groups. That's grown hugely in the last five years, and that's a good thing to see. Now we've got to make sure that those students who come to visit the campus actually choose the campus. That's also growing. And then also make th sure that when they get here, they feel comfortable. Absolutely. And that's just hard work. Oh, sure. I mean, it's not, and, and when people say, well, things are, you know, people are a little bit upset about this or people are raising concerns, I actually, my reaction to that is not to be upset. My reaction is, actually, that's a good sign. That's we're a talking. good sign. Because we're talking, and what it means is that people who maybe don't come from the majority culture are feeling comfortable enough to speak up. And that's good. Absolutely. That's not bad. Yeah. That's good. So looking to post TCNJ, what are your plans career-wise in the future? Are you planning on coming back, communication with the school? Sure, sure. So um, first of all, I have to sort of move in, right? <laughs> <laughs> which is going to be a big job because we're downsizing from a rather large house to a two-bedroom apartment. Um, so that'll be a big job at sure. first. I will be doing some consulting with the Association of Governing Boards, and that's an organization that works with institutions of higher education. Uh, I will be focusing mostly on governance of boards of trustees, uh, shared governance, and also mentoring new presidents, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, and yes, I will come back anytime I'm invited, uh, but, I, but I will also stay out of the way of the new president, which I think is very important. Great. So to finish up, what is something that you're going to miss the most about TCNJ? The students and the faculty. What about them in particular? I, 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 I've been here, lo I've lived here longer than I've lived any other place in my life. And it's because I found a place that just felt right. And um, there's something about the community that is TCNJ that, um, that is to be cherished and preserved. And I will miss that. I will miss that a lot. Well, Dr. Gittenstein, thank you. Oh, you're more than welcome. For having it's a pleasure. Us. Thank you to t from TCNJ for everything you've done for us over the last 19 years, and we wish you the best of luck in the future. Thank you. I'm Kelsey Haynes from Lions Television. We'll see you next time.